بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد charity sadaqa for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is incredibly important for us as Muslims and charity has various forms as we learn from the Quran and the authentic ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we learn that sadaqa can be given in a variety of ways that charity comes in a variety of different forms and ways and in the hadith of Abi Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu which is a very important hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it shows us the simplicity of charity that although a person may be restricted in their means, in their income, in their wealth, in what they possess they still have the opportunity to please Allah with something simple charity can be something as simple as a smile for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the scholars of Islam as we're about to explore they differ of whether it requires a uh, intention in giving the types of sadaqah that we're about to mention or not and we'll come to this masala as we deal with the text عن أبي ذر رضي الله تعالى عنه أن أناس من أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قالوا لنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رسول الله ذهب أهل الدثور بالأجور يصلون كما نصلي ويصومون كما نصوم ويتصدقون بفضول أموالهم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أو ليس قد جعل الله لكم ما تصدقون إن بكل تصبيحة صدقة وكل تكبيرة صدقة وكل تمحيدة صدقة وكل تحليلة صدقة وأمر بمعروف صدقة وناحيا المنكر صدقة وفي بدع أهدكم صدقة قالوا يا رسول الله أيأتي أهدنا شهوته ويكون له فيها أجر قال أرأيتم لو وضعت وضعها في حرام في حرام أكان عليه وزر فكذلك إذا وضعها في الحلال كان له أجر رواه مسلم من الحديث of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which was the hadith of Abi Dhar رضي الله تعالى عنه may Allah سبحانه وتعالى have mercy and be pleased upon all the Sahaba to Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم he said Abi Dhar narrated this hadith and he said he said verily a group of people from amongst the companions of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said O Messenger of Allah they said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم O Rasulullah, O Messenger, o, o Messenger of Allah, the people that have wealth, they've taken away all the reward. They've taken all the reward. They pray like we pray. They fast as we fast. And they give charity from their... Uh, from the greatest amount of their wealth, meaning that they have a, they're bestowed with wealth, and that they give charity from the best of their wealth. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Didn't Allah make for you uh, ways of 
giving uh, charity, giving sadaqah, verily every tasbih saying subhanallah is charity. And every takbir, meaning saying Allahu Akbar, is sadaqah. And every tamheedah, meaning say alhamdulillah, is sadaqah. And every tahleela is sadaqah. Wa amr bi ma'roof is sadaqah. And commanding the good is a type of charity. And prohibiting evil is a type of charity. And in the relationship of one of you with his his sp his spouse or vice versa the the woman with her spouse is a charity and then the companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in they said o messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of us can uh, fulfill his desires and it will be, and he'll receive reward from it, meaning he'll receive reward and ajr from his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu said, don't you see that if he did it in an unlawful way, that he would receive sins? So likewise, if he does it lawfully, then he'll receive ajr, reward, ruahu muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is tremendous and immense benefits from this hadith that the shurahat or the, the people who explain the ahadith that the Prophet ﷺ have brought about immense benefits for us. But I'm just going to refer to just a few basic things that Allama Shaykh Sali Ali Shaykh Hafidhullah Ta'ala that he mentioned. He mentioned a very important mas'ala here that will we'll talk about. So we're going to come at this hadith from a different angle as this Alam Rabbani came at it from a different angle. And that shows you the benefit of studying with the scholars. And it shows you the benefit of taking your knowledge from the scholars because the scholars, there are so many, there are, mashallah, tabarakallah, and fadlillah, still living many scholars of Ahl Sunnah. And they're all over the world. And with that in mind, that you're able to gain a variety of benefits from different scholars. Some scholars, they come at it from one angle. Some scholars come at it from another angle. And you'll find so many benefits and masail or issues that they, they deal with and they bring about benefits. Each scholar bringing about their own benefits from what they studied and the ulama that they studied with and, and the books that they studied and from their own fiqh and understanding of the religion. So... This provides for us a treasure, an immense treasure, that if we only take the time to study, then we'll be able to benefit from this treasure. So in this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, the Prophet wasallam was asked, or uh, a group of the companions of the Prophet wasallam, ajma'in, they, they, they were complaining to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the fact that some of their other, some of the other companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiallahu Ta'ala Anu Majma'in were seen to be getting all the reward from Allah. They believed this because they, they fast and they fast. Both parties fast. And they pray and they pray. And they uh, make dhikr and they make dhikr. But they have money and means, so they're able to do more charity. And the other group was restricted in what they're able to give because they didn't have much. Radiallahu ta'ala majma'in. So they were complaining to the Prophet sallallahu regarding this issue. The Prophet sallallahu clarified for them that sadaqah comes in different forms, that there's various ways of charity. So it's open for the believer to give charity in, very, in a variety of ways. Here are some that are mentioned in this hadith. One of the ways the Prophet ﷺ, by, by making those, those, uh, those various types of dhikr and praise of Allah, by saying Allahu Akbar, 
saying uh, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, wallahu akbar, uh, and so forth. These are some of the ways uh, of, these are types of dhikr, ways of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising Him. And they are also ways to receive reward and they are a type of charity. They are a type of charity or sadaqah. And the Prophet sallallahu also let them know that they could also, just by practicing their religion, amr bi ma'ruf, commanding the good, inviting people to good. And there's so many ways to do amr bi ma'ruf, to command to the good. Command to the good is not simply, uh, commanding to the good is very broad. That there are ways you can invite someone to Islam. You can invite someone to the sunnah who's not practicing the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. You can illustrate goodness for someone. And all of these are ways in which you are commanding to the good. And prohibiting the evil. That when you see an evil being done, that you try to change it with your hand if you're able to do so. Or that you speak about it, speak out against it with your tongue. And then give dawah, invite the person back away from that which is harmful for them. Or you at least hate it in your heart. That's also a way of prohibiting uh, munkar. And that's a part of iman. That's also a part of our iman. As the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, which was also narrated in, in Sahih Muslim, who said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ يَقُولُ مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيْرُهُ بِيَدْ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِي لِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِي قَلْبِهِ وَذَلَكَ عَرَفَ الْإِمَانِ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said as Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated, or he said, I heard the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say, whoever sees an evil deed or some some evil from amongst you, then they should change it with their hands. And if they're unable to do so, they should change it with their tongue by speaking out against it. And if they're able to unable to do so, then they should hate it in their heart. And that is the weakest of faith. Showing us that all of those are contained, those are the those are all a part of Iman. And it also illustrates for us which contradicts the aqidah of the murjia and other groups who hold this belief about iman. It shows us that iman fluctuates and iman is comprised of actions and uh, statements of the tongue and actions of the heart, what is contained in the heart. All of that comprises of iman. None of that can be taken away from iman. It's all a part of iman. As the Prophet wasallam said in that hadith, so, going back to our topic at hand, is that commanding the good is a type of charity. Also, the Prophet ﷺ said, in that same hadith, he said, and basically that a person fulfills their, uh, their shahwa or their desires with their lawful partner in accordance with the sharia, meaning their, if he's a man, with his wife. If it's a wife or a woman, it's with her husband. That if they fulfill their desires with one another in a lawful way, that that's a type of charity. SubhanAllah. Islam opens up the way to goodness. It, 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 it opens up the way in so many different ways. In ways that are conducive to uh, our various lifestyles. And ways in which you know, everyone can find a way to give charity, regardless of whether they have money or not, as long as they're doing the halal, and their intention is to please Allah, then they can receive reward. So then at the, the end of that hadith, the, the uh, companions, that group, uh, a, a group of the companions, they said, O Messenger of Allah, if we uh, fulfill our desires with, one, with our Wives will receive reward. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if, uh, don't you see that if you were to do that in an unlawful fashion, you would receive sin. 
So the fact that you do it with in a lawful manner, you receive ajr, reward. And this was narrated in Muslim, as we mentioned. From this hadith, a very beneficial mas'ala that Shaykh Sari al Shaykh Hafidullah Ta'ala he mentioned here, he mentioned so many benefits, but actually he, he was very concise in the explanation of this hadith. And one of the things that were uh, he mentioned, he said that the ulama, there's a group of the ulama, they said, he, he brought up the, the mas'ala, he said, وَاخْتَلَفَ أَهْلَ الْعِلْمِ فِي هَذِهِ الْمَسْأَلَةِ The mas'ala uh, of whether a person who um, fulfills, does this lawful action, for example, the husband uh, has relationship with his wife, does it require his intention or not? Meaning his intention to please Allah, to get us charity or not? Or is it sufficient for him to fulfill his uh him and his, his wife to fulfill their desires in a lawful manner. So the scholars, they differed with regards to this. In a group of the ulama, they said that this these desires that Allah has tested his slaves with, that if they do it in a lawful fashion, they'll be rewarded. And this is with, without even making the intention to do so. Just the fact that they did halal. And this is coming from the zahir, the apparent meaning of this hadith. So that, and that it, they also said that it is sufficient, your general intention, that you are doing acts, acts of obedience to Allah, and just your intention of being a Muslim, and your daily intention of doing righteousness. And he said, and then with that, then the person will receive uh, that from doing this act, they will receive reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is from the, the general intention to do good and to do uh, that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other group of scholars, they said, this hadith uh, should be uh, understood in the context of the other nusus, the other ahadith and verses in the Quran which show us the importance of the intention, and that intention is tied to the action that you do. As the Prophet wasallam said in an exact nas, the hadith that we're hopefully all aware of, the hadith of uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, سَمَعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولْ إِنَّمَا عَمَالَ بِالنِّيَاتِ The Prophet wasallam said, verily actions are tied to the intention. So that right there shows us that it shows us the relationship between our reward, receiving reward, and the, uh, for, for what we intend. And that our actions are measured, they're good, they're, whether they're good or bad, or their level of reward will be in accordance with our intention. As the Prophet wasallam said in the same hadith, in the he said, verily actions are tied to the intention, and verily everyone shall get that for which he intended. So everyone will get that for which he intended. So that shows us, again, that a, force, a, a, a person's actions or a, a person's intention in relation to their action, they will receive reward in accordance with their intention. If their intention was good, then they will receive a, a good uh, reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reward from Allah. If their intention was good, and of course, that they did it in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So, this group of scholars, they said that you must have the intention. That you must make an intention for whatever you're doing. For example, and then they give the example, if a person leaves the haram to do the halal. So, for example, the person who was going, they were looking at pornography, for example involved in pornography and they were doing what pornography leads to of course masturbation and things like this they were uh, involved in these types of actions or they get so excited from the pornography then they go out and and commit zina with someone and so forth with their girlfriend with their boyfriend etc so this this is the haram way of fulfilling a person's desires 
However, as the scholars think that if a person were going to do that, but then they decide they leave that and they make toba from that, they repent from that evil, they were making pornography, they were masturbating, they were going to be with their girlfriend or boyfriend, then they say, no, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go to the halal. And maybe they get married from that. So they leave the haram for the sake of Allah. So this group of scholars, he said, the niya, you must have the intention. That even to do that, they're leaving the haram to go to the halal, and it required intention. It required intention. Not sufficient just to leave the haram and go to the halal. And why is this? The ulama, they also mention a lot of examples. For example, there's a very important principle. A, 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 a principle in usul al fiqh or uh, or qaid fiqhia, it's a qaid, and it says that the, the scholars they say uh, al amur bi maqasidaha, or basically that the uh, the affair is in accordance with its uh, with its intention. So meaning that the reward of someone is in accordance with their intention. So, they, uh, one of the examples I've heard some of the Mashiach mention, for example, the person who is going to rob someone's house. And they put the ladder up to the person's window. And they're going to rob, steal from this person. They left their house, they prepared themselves, they got their ladder. When they get up close, they realize their ladder is not long enough to get in the window. And they hear noises, so they decide to leave. They pack their ladder up and they go. They've left the haram, and they decide to go and you know do something lawful. But they didn't have the intention. The reason this person left the haram is because their ladder wasn't long enough. They couldn't fulfill doing the haram. Or the person who goes who wants to go to the nightclub. They're geared up. They got their perfume on. They're they're smelling good, looking good. The they've got their best dress on. They're ready to go. They go, get in their car, they're on their way to the club. They get a flat tire. It ruins their whole night. They return after fixing their flat tire. They decide they go home. This person will not receive reward for leaving the haram. Why? Because they didn't have the intention. The only reason they left the haram is because the flat tire changed their mood. Maybe they missed the club. Or the flat tire just... It, it, changed their mood, so they said, hey, I really don't feel like going out tonight and dancing and meeting someone or whatever. Instead, they return back to their home, so they are not rewarded for Allah. But the person in that same situation who is on their way to the club and they get up to the door or what have you, and they see their friends and they see new people and they want to enjoy, and then they say, well, I feel very bad for, because I know Allah hates this, not because of anyone else. But strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I feel shame. And they leave that for the sake of Allah. Seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking the pleasure of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And they leave that haram only for the sake of Allah. This person will have a great reward because they left the haram to come to the halal. And this is what that qa'id that we were just mentioning, that the scholars uh, mentioned, that... And this all relates to the intention. Uh, another benefit the Sheikh mentioned, he mentioned also uh, as evidence to support that, that opinion of the, those scholars who say that you must make the intention. He, he also mentioned another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is, uh, he said, وَثَبَتَ fi sahih." So this could mean Sahih Bukhari, uh, Sahih Bukhari wa Muslim. And he said, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, innaka lan tunfiqa nafaqatan tabtaghi biha wajhallahi illa ujirta alayha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith, which the Shaykh made istidlal of this hadith, used this as evidence for that view that you must have intention for... Uh, for that, for, for whatever you're doing, is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Verily, you, you won't spend seeking the pleasure of Allah, except that 
you will be rewarded for it. So showing that it was muqayyid here, that this nas here, this text, was defined and restricted by the statement tabtaghi biha wajhillah that it wasn't just a matter of spending this this wealth in a good manner giving this charity to someone poor but it was the fact that you gave it tabtaghi biha wajhillah that you did it seeking the face of Allah seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the fact this hadith illustrates for us that and brings home for us as many other ahadith and verses in the Quran that we need to have intention for this and it appears that this is the Shaykh's view in addition to those other uh, ulama that came before him rahimahumullah jami'an that held this view that you must have intention so in the situation going back to the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said you would receive reward by having relations with your spouse because that's halal of course during the halal times and in a halal fashion meaning if, if she has height she is, she is uh, on her period her menstrual cycle then of course you cannot uh, uh, enter you know, you cannot have sexual intercourse, but you can do other things. You can do the other ways of seeking pleasure with one another and enjoying one another. You can just not enter uh, full, fully sexually with her, Allah. So, but this requires intention. It requires that you're doing it also to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are uh, doing it, you're choosing the lawful in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.